Hi guys, welcome to Thoughtful Thursday. I'm life coach JJ Joshua at jjforinsight.com. Today I want to talk about happiness in hard times. Is it even possible? And I will offer a simple three-step approach that might make happiness a little bit more feasible for you no matter what. And ask the question, is it morally okay to be happy when so many people on the planet right now are deeply suffering? Is it okay to be happy when maybe people close to you are suffering? And I answer that this way. A longtime teacher of mine says, the worst thing that you can do is for the poor people is to join them. And the worst thing you can do for the haters is to join them. And the worst thing you can do for the sick people is to join them. So yes, I think it is morally okay for us to be happy no matter what. In fact, it really is a gift, not just to you. It's a gift to everyone around you and to the world. Because when we're in happiness, our hearts are open. We're open to connection. We're open to higher wisdom. We're open to creativity and abundance. In depression or disappointment or sadness, we're contracted. We're not open for connection. What would your life be like if you were to choose to be happy no matter what? I was inspired to cover this topic this week because of my own inner process thinking about the end of the year. We are now in the fourth quarter of 2020 and oh my, what a, what a year it has been. And I was checking inside myself, how do I want to be with the election coming up and every week of 2020, we've had some kind of big surprise. As a life coach for 24 years, I often stress the importance of intentional beginnings and intentional completions. So I was pondering the completion of this year, the last three months, and just, you know, just scanning inwardly, how do I want to feel no matter who gets elected? How do I want to feel no matter what happens with the Supreme Court or with the air quality or the environment? How do I want to be inside myself with all the changes that are completely beyond my control? And then I remembered a teaching that I discovered over 10 years ago, this beautiful book by Michael A. Singer, The Untethered Soul. Thank you, Michael A. Singer, for writing this, and in particular, chapter 15, seven pages, seven page chapter that could change your life, The Path to Unconditional Happiness. He says to us, he simply asks a question, simple question. Do you want to be happy or not? Really, you want to be happy or not? And then he goes on to say that most people don't even dare to consider that an option because they don't believe they're in control of that. And then he says, happiness is a choice. But if you set up any kind of condition or deeply seated preference that must take place, you will limit your happiness. Like, I can't be happy if so-and-so gets elected. I can't be happy until the economy picks up. I can't be happy until I get my old job back. I can't be happy until my spouse stops doing that thing. I can't be happy with my body full of pain. Well, the truth is we give our happiness and our peace away so easily. And I confess, I'm one of them. For the last 15 years, I've been living in the Pacific Northwest. I'm from Colorado originally, and I can't even count how many times I've given my happiness away to a gray, rainy day. Yep, I've done that. And I'm going to stop doing that right now. In 1987, I traveled to Peru with 56 other spiritual seekers, and we were there to see all the sacred sites and climb Machu Picchu and all that cool stuff. And we traveled around in a big bus. And one day we were coming back from one of the sacred sites and we stopped at this village. I had never seen a village like this. I had never seen people live like this. Coming from the suburbs of Denver, these people really did live in little mud huts 
and um, everything they drank and ate and wore, everything they did, they worked hard for all day long. But the village did not at all seem poor to me. It actually seemed very peaceful and sweet. And as we were leaving the village, a little ways out from the village, I was sitting on a window seat and I saw this one woman, she's probably 45 or 50, you know, the short, squatty Peruvian women with all the colors they dress in. And it was sunset and the sunset was shining on her and her face. And she was dancing, barefoot dancing by herself on this little hill, just radiantly dancing like a child. And of all the beautiful things that I saw and the awesome mind-blowing things that I saw in Peru, the thing that most landed in me was her face. And her face is going to serve to be my North Star for the next three months. On October 1st, I made a declaration that I am going to live the unconditional happiness path. I'm going to do my best with it. That was eight days ago, you guys, and I can already tell a difference inside myself. Now, if you care to join me in this idea, I've been practicing three strategies to help me stay on track. First one is the power of intention. So on my first trip to the bathroom in the morning, I get right up close to the mirror and I say to myself, okay, JJ, here we go. No matter what happens, no matter what the weather, the news, the politics, no matter what, we're choosing the path of unconditional happiness today. When you make an intentional statement to yourself in the mirror, it magnifies the intensity for your subconscious mind, the quantum field, and your soul. It's like a double, triple memo. So look in the mirror and give your intention for the day. And this would go for any of your intentions for your life. The second thing is, because I'm human, if I fall off the happiness train, if I fall off the happiness wagon, how do I get back up? And that is to just have the self-awareness, self-correct, and go back to the mirror and say the intention again. Or if you don't have a mirror handy, just say your intention again. No matter what, I choose the path of unconditional happiness. And then number three, really fun, smiling. Smiling, even if we're fake smiling, sends all kinds of happy hormones to our brain and all through our nervous system. So instead of just doing my emails, you know, click, 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 <laughs> doing the dishes, now I'm smiling, and smiling as much as I can because heavens knows we need more happy hormones here in the last quarter of 2020. So let's use our biology, the smiling happy hormones, the power of intention first thing in the day, and then the power of self-awareness and, and, and correction, self-correction to bring yourself back to that intention should you waver on to help us choose to be happy no matter what. I truly hope you will join me in this unconditional happiness experiment and from my heart to yours. I wish you great happiness and peace. Thank you for clicking in today. Be kind to your mind. Ta-ta for now.